Hello and welcome to the first Bottisham Village College Leadership Academy um, session. I hope this video finds you well and you've got access to the whole Google form and information. During this session I'm going to take you through lots of different areas, um, explaining first of all how this Leadership Academy will work, but also looking at individual parts of session one, which will be looking at the uh, types of a leader and the things that make a good leader. Okay. So first and foremost, thinking about um, what we obviously want as a um, the purpose of the programme. The purpose of the programme is gaining experience in leadership. It might be that you want to gain um, work with experienced different staff and students to share knowledge. Um, it might be you have fantastic knowledge and you actually want to pass that over to a member of the teaching staff or the PE faculty. It might be that you want to develop key employability skills which can be used throughout life, either added to your CV, my Bosham experience, or different forms um, that you could actually then apply into interviews or maybe weekend jobs, um, etc. or lifelong career choices. For example, if you wanted to be a PE teacher, a sports coach, work in gyms, etc., this would be a fantastic opportunity for you. But you'd also be able to look at the employability skills such as communication, teamwork, planning, um, reflection um, and evaluation etc all those different key skills which are really really important throughout life in different forms also it can challenge you it's actually quite difficult and challenging sometimes being in front of other people and having to lead therefore it's a really really good opportunity for you to try and practice and um, practice that okay so in session one which is this session um, you are going to be looking at why be a leader what makes a good sports leader and there's going to be different forms of a leader we're going to look at. Your task associated with this is going to be to research a sports leader of your choice. You'll be submitting this via the um, Google form which you are now hopefully on and you're accessing this video. There's going to be a series of different questions for you to complete but also this task where you can upload so via taking a photograph or upload the document um, which includes your research of a sports leader of your choice. What you'll need to do to successfully complete this course, you'll need to complete not only the different sessions, but you'll also need to complete the different tasks associated with it. Some of them will be practical based as we move through, and some of them will be more theory based like this. Okay, I will explain each week by week um, how the programme will work. So, on the screen now, there are lots of different sports leaders. Okay, some managers, some are captains, some might be coaches, some might be on there. Different types of people who maybe are involved with administration or leadership in a club or a country. Okay, so for example, um, Baroness Karen Brady, bottom left, okay, is a director. Okay, um, of a West Ham United, and also is involved with boardroom level. You've got um, Sir Alex Ferguson on the top left, one of um, Britain's most successful football managers of all time. You've got Owen Morgan, Bobby Moore, you've got Martin Johnson, all captains of major teams, Tom Brady on there, of winning successful sports teams. You've got Anthony Taylor, top um, second from the top right um, here. If I just circle him, giving looks like um, David Luiz, okay, twenty three, a red card, okay. He is a leader. He is an official, which all contributes to the game, okay. We've got Raponi, okay, um, American footballer, female footballer, Jessica Ennis Hill, all different forms of coaches, or sorry, leaders as well in the game. You've also got maybe more localised coaches, okay, maybe on a lower level, so they're not professional. Don't have to be professional to be a leader. It can be at all levels of the game. Hope Powell, um, former England women's football coach manager, is also on here. So there's lots of different people for you to try and identify. So a leader can be a manager, um, it could be a coach, a referee um, or umpire. Um, a secretary or administrator, it could be a captain. So there's lots of different things a leader can be. So a leader 
is about you having shared qualities. Some of those shared qualities might include you thinking about any of the following, okay? Some of those shared qualities. It might be why you might want to be a leader, okay? Is to build confidence, make friends. It might be you are injured, okay? You see, if I go back to some of these images, okay? It might be that some of these people were injured or they couldn't perform okay any longer maybe because of age therefore they needed to wanted to stay involved in the game so they became a sports leader okay they wanted to stay involved particularly you get this sometimes with referees okay officials they want to stay involved in the game but they can no longer participate to that demand it might be lack of ability which means they can't perform so therefore they want to stay involved in the game as much as possible so with those key qualities just have a think about and you may want to pause the video you're welcome to if you want to think about obviously what those shared qualities are um, as a leader um, across those different attributes there okay so you're welcome to pause that and have a think if you thank you if you have already paused that or if you would like to um, just if you just continue straight on obviously going back to this slide okay so obviously why be a leader you're gaining new skills all the time you're learning it might be you're learning from participants if you think back to sir alex ferguson when he started his career in about the um, late 1980s it would be very different his type of career okay his um attributes would have been very different different to 2013 when he retired okay when he was managing different players they, some argue now he wouldn't be able to manage in the same way um, and light that he possibly does um, that, that he did back in the time. Okay, earn money. Leaders can earn money. A referee earns good money. A Premier League referee earns a very good salary, certainly more than, than me as a teacher. Earning money also could be a Saturday job. You going out and doing your local football Colts game as a referee. It could be the manager. Okay, all these people that we had those photos up of, all are leaders of some kind that earn money. Okay, they have the opportunity, and they give opportunities to other people. Okay, because they want to maybe inspire the next generation. It might be that they want to give opportunities to their um, to their children. Okay, or their um, younger siblings. Okay, all different family members or friends. So it might be they get involved their local sports club as a leader to give opportunities. Staying connected to the game. As I said previously, once you're retired, okay, or you feel you are maybe no longer able to participate actively, you want to stay connected to the game. Therefore, what you may choose to do is you may choose to maybe be a secretary or something associated with the club at a level. I'm going to focus on enjoyment. You might really enjoy being part of sport. You could argue, why do some of these football managers, why would okay, some of these key people on here get involved? Why did Martin Johnson want to be England rugby coach after he'd lifted the World Cup as a leader in 2003? He wanted to be that leader as a rugby manager and coach of England's rugby team because he had that enjoyment and passion for England rugby wanted to give opportunities to new people he wanted to try and be a successful manager as a um, coach as he was a player and leader as a captain so it's all of those different things it doesn't always work out bobby moore okay as shown on here okay 1966 england's only captain to lift the world cup he went into management he had a go at management he wasn't as successful but he was probably uh, by all accounts one of it were England's greatest captain, not only by the fact he won the World Cup, but some of his key qualities that he possessed. So it's a great opportunity for that. Sir Alex Ferguson wasn't a success everywhere he went. He struggled in his first few jobs. He was about one game from the sack. He got lucky with uh, Mark Robbins scoring a very important goal in an FA Cup tie, which kept them in it. He kept his job, and therefore, as he kept his job, what that meant was the rest is history, as they might say. Okay, Owen Morgan, 
wasn't necessarily successful, okay, as a test match cricketer. But he then went on to be England's, well, our, well England's greatest white ball captain of all time, lifting the World Cup um, a few years ago in 2019. So it's great opportunities there throughout the game that you always have to take into account. And not always, that people are not always in the greatest position always throughout so they might not always be successful in everything they do so over the next few sessions we can look at some attributes and responsibilities of those leaders what makes them a good leader so what i want you to do is just i'm going to put onto the screen now a few different attributes um, focusing on these and we're going to look at the difference between the attributes and responsibilities in session two so these are some of the different things which are attributes of a good sports leader. Communication, organisation of equipment, knowledge of the game, activity structure, target setting, use of language, evaluation, appearance, enthusiasm, confidence, leadership style, motivation, humour and personality. So I'm going to revisit them in session two, but what I wanted to do in session one was just to give you that understanding because I want you to think about those different people um, or those different qualities and attributes as you start to complete the task here. So if you do need to rewind, you're welcome just to skip back and have a look back at some of these attributes if it helps you with the task. So the task is to research a sports leader of your choice. So whether or not that's any of the ones I had on the screen, it could be your local sports coach, it could be your local um, it could be me or any other member of the P faculty. It could be any sports leader, okay? So anyone that's a coach, a referee, a um, captain of your kind, um, any form of leader you can choose. I want you to research them and tell me a bit about them. It might be you think about some of these different attributes when you are talking about them, okay? I suggest you design it as a poster. If you want to do it as a leaflet, if you want to do it, present it however you wish, okay, a spider diagram, however you want, you are going to research a sports leader of your choice and tell me all about them. You might be telling me about some of their experiences. So when we talk about knowledge, we might say, Sir Alex Ferguson, how many games he's managed in his career. All those different things will build up, so that's why he's a good sports leader, which we'll be looking at in session two and beyond. Okay, so they are the tasks for um, session one. I hope um, that all makes sense. If you've got any questions, please contact me, um, Mr. Darling, and I'll happily answer them. I very look forward to seeing all your work. Please upload it to this Google form. If you've got any problems doing that, just please email it to me and I will upload it for you. Um, and I hope to see you all in session two, which will look at the attributes of a sports leader. Thank you.